Anderson with the Media Division of the Department of Cal Poly Pomona. We're here in beautiful sunny Oregon for day three, the last day of the EDUCAUSE conference. Uh, we have one more keynote speaker and we're going to get some takeaways from people and maybe what's coming up next year uh, in uh, EDUCAUSE. Let's go check it out. I'm here with Cable Green from the Creative Commons. Cable, I understand you're today's uh, keynote speech. Uh, what will you be talking about today? We'll be talking about open educational resources, uh, open policies, but the big idea that we're talking about is we now have the capabilities on the web because of the internet uh, to share with anybody in the world. And uh, the area that I focus on is education. And I work at an organization uh, called Creative Commons that makes it easy to share on the web, and not just easy, but legal. Yeah, the, the legal issue is, is a big one. Um, uh, what do you see as hurdles in the way of um, this open sharing coming in the future? Well, I think that uh, some people get uh, concerned in education that uh, sharing under an open license means that they're giving their copyright away and that they're actually losing their ownership, and that's, uh, that's not true. So the good news about Creative Commons is you keep your copyright, so you keep all your ownership. And what you do when you put a Creative Commons license on something is you're extending some rights to others under some conditions. So for example, all of our licenses require attribution, uh, which is, uh, you know, makes sense in the academy. When we use somebody else's stuff, we give credit. We cite them. What we're trying to do at Creative Commons is to make it easy for people to find the openly licensed resources, the courses, the textbooks, the simulations that they're looking for. And the way you do that on the web is you make sure that, there's, uh, that they're machine readable so that the tools on the internet that we all use, the apps, can actually find those things. I'm here with Mike from Emporia State University, and Mike is the incoming chair of the uh, program committee for next year's EDUCAUSE. Mike, I was wondering if you could give us some uh, previews of what's coming up next year. Well, we, we've already started meeting. We met this morning for breakfast, and uh, we will start monthly meetings here in March uh, to start planning. There's a lot of excitement, and we're keeping in mind that um, the two main things that people come to this conference are, and this is through evaluations and, and responses that we received, number one is practical takeaways, and the second piece is networking, and so we're going to keep focused on those things um, as we plan through the year. Oh, I, I absolutely um value being able to meet people from different institutions, hear what they're, um, what the kind of projects they're working on, what kind of challenges they're facing. Um, there's always a sense of kind of unity because you realize when you meet somebody and have lunch with them that they're dealing with some of the same issues that at their institution that you're dealing with. At the lunch discussions we, we shared a lot of ideas on, I was at the mobile table and so we talked all about mobile apps that we thought were good for education, we talked about um, different ways to roll out and support devices. Um, so I think I think it's nice meeting people who are at a very similar state in their school uh, rollout of technologies and being able to compare notes and then take back the best ideas. One of the takeaways I learned is that, or I know, is that we need to find those personal stories that people will relate to, have emotional tie to it, and then you have to have a very creative group of people who know how to put that in technology and work with it very effectively, and had a great group from a uh, Cal State of Pomona that really seemed to have their act together. Uh, I was just really impressed. It was not just the technology, but they worked as a team. You had content experts, you had people who can direct, uh, you have students who can work with you, and a good, uh, I guess, a good vibe, a good creative vibe to get that story out there. And I was just really impressed with the, the cohesiveness and the team uh, aspect of their work. We've had remarkable weather. It's been sunny and beautiful, which is not necessarily what you expect in February in Portland, but it's been absolutely glittering, beautiful weather. And it's been an excellent conference. I've met a lot of colleagues from different places, especially being up here in the Northwest, getting to meet people from Washington and Oregon, Portland State and University of Oregon and uh, Whitman College in Walla Walla and Evergreen State, as well as colleagues from California. And a lot of people came out from Texas, which is really great. So it's been a fantastic conference. And right now I'm getting forward, I'm looking forward to uh, going in and seeing, seeing Cable Green close it out. So I got to see you and um, we'll see you at the next conference. Bye. Uh, any uh, hints to where the next uh, physical location might be for the conference? No, but we should know within, within March. Um, we talked about that. Um, it, it certainly has a lot to do with budget. We know we're going to probably head southwest because it was up here in the, in the northwest this time and we want to give those, op those people an opportunity that are in that Texas, Arizona, New Mexico region to have something closer to home there. So it'll be in that area, but we're not exactly sure where yet. So. It's not any sort of secret that we're keeping, we're yeah. just not.
We haven't worked out the details. Okay. So. Well, Mike, thank you very much for talking to us, and I look to see, forward to seeing you next year. Very good.